week's episode, we're going to take a look at how we can make sure that our DNS zone is correctly configured and protected from potential problems. For this example, we're going to start out by doing some research into two different domains of some competitors, and then taking a look at what kind of DNS information we can derive, and these will be great things to examine for our own servers to make sure that everything is in good shape. The two companies we'll take a look at are CVS and Walgreens. Now, to be clear, we're not going to do anything to compromise these domains or try to attack them, but what we're showing is how some of the reconnaissance phase for an attacker might occur, and it only makes sense that an auditor or security person would perform these same tests to make sure that everything is secure. So let's start by taking a look at CVS. Now, what we're going to use is the command line whois tool. So we'll do a whois on cvs.com. Now, there's a few interesting things to find right away. The first one is we can see that CVS is not actually maintaining their own DNS servers. For a lot of reasons, you really would prefer to find that your company owns their own DNS servers rather than farming this out to someone. The least of which is that if you need to make an emergency change, you're now at the mercy of, in this case, AT&T in order to get that change made. And they may not be willing to reboot those servers or restart the DNS so that it will have the newest options in there. Another interesting find that we have here is something that I strongly recommend is changed. Notice here that we have a, an individual's name listed as the administrative contact for the domain. While it is a common practice to do this kind of thing, it's, it's actually a very bad idea. The reason is that if this person, Amy Santangelo, were to leave CVS, what are the chances that someone will actually go in and change this record? You see, the issue is that since Amy is listed here, it's really no problem for Amy to go in later on, maybe contact the registrar, indicate that she has lost her email address and needs to make a change, and simply providing a copy of her driver's license, she can now obtain complete administrative control and redirect the domain, because according to this, she is authorized to make any changes. Of course, that may have ramifications for her, and CVS does have uh, recourse in order to get the domain back, but we'd really prefer to avoid that problem completely. Other things to watch for, of course, would be things like the expiration date on the domain. In this case, it expires about six months from now, which is not, uh, not too soon, but we'd just like to make sure that someone is keeping their eye on that and making sure that things are being kept up to date, so that if for some reason we're coming close to that deadline, someone is responsible for renewing the domain. Let's take a look at their, their competitor, Walgreens. So we'll do a who is on Walgreens as well, and we'll see a few differences here, and we're going to do some other research as well. When we look at the Walgreens site, notice that Walgreens Domain Manager is listed as the administrative contact. So this is a little bit safer because it doesn't rely on a single person, and if someone were to leave the company, it's not going to have any big impact on us. Also, notice that the domain servers are actually owned by Walgreens, so this is a big improvement. They, too, have their domain expiring in, well, about 10 or 11 months, so they're still going to want to keep their eye on that, and come around January or February, I would start asking the question of who's responsible for getting that renewed. But let's take a look at another item. Let's take a look at what we can do once we've identified where your name servers are. In this case, I'm going to do two different things. Let's ping www.walgreens.com and see where that is. Now that's currently in the 184.87 network, and I'd like to compare that to where the ns6.walgreens.com is. And what I find is this is at 204.15. Now, I'm pointing this out because it's really common these days to find that a, a company has outsourced or, or co-located their domain, their, uh, excuse me, their website. This is because of the volume they may be expecting at their website. Yet, the name servers, or even more likely the mail servers, will likely be at their actual network. Now, in this case, when I ping that, that uh, web server, you see that the reverse lookup comes up and says that it's at Akamai Edge whereas NS6 comes back as being at walgreens.com. Let's do one more test. I'm actually going to go into the command line version of NSLOOKUP. I'm going to tell it that I'd like to find mailer records for walgreens.com, and that will come back and show me that these two are in the 204.15 network, the same as the DNS server. So my next step is to do who is 
for 204.15.116.15. Now the reason is I'd like to find out what the actual network range is that is assigned to Walgreens. Now you may not find it assigned to Walgreens. You may find that it's been assigned to maybe some ISP or something like that, but by doing this kind of research I can be sure that I'm targeting only their IP address space, which as an auditor or security professional would be important to me. As a hacker who is specifically interested in Walgreens, this would be interesting or important too, but if I were just looking for things to compromise, I wouldn't bother with that particular step. I can see here though that their IP addresses range from 204.15.116 through 119, so they actually have a fairly large amount of IP address space assigned to them by ARIN, or the American Registry for Internet Numbers. I've got a project here called uh, Reverse Mapper. It's a very simple mapper that will allow us to do reverse lookups for each of the IP addresses in that range. Let's just see what that looks like and why this would be a really good test to do during an audit, during a security uh, test, or even during a penetration test. So off it goes and it's already finding things. I'm just going to stop it there. And let's just scroll back a little bit and see why this is so interesting. Now before we do, I want you to be really clear that we have not done anything to attack them. All we've done is pull out domain records. We've simply asked their DNS server a question, can you tell me what host is at this address, and it's answered that question. When I scroll back, I find the name server listed, and I find a series of mail servers, and then I find one called csosmailbox.walgreens.com. Now, I don't know what that is, but I would have to wonder if that stood for CSO's mailbox. Is perhaps the chief security officer have his own mailbox, or could this be some product? I then see WHI client. That doesn't mean a lot to me. VGAT, VGATEB. So this is some kind of product, VGATE, server A and B. VGATE. Not sure what that is. Another name server, but now here's where we start finding interesting things. Notice this one is qa1.photo.walgreens.com, and here we have qa.prodfix.walgreens.com, services qa.walgreens.com. QA is most likely quality assurance. So why is it that we find the addresses for the quality assurance or testing servers out on the internet? And if I were an attacker or a security defender, my next question would be, can I reach those servers? Because more than likely, that's where the code that's still being tested exists. Further down, we find other interesting ones like employee.walgreens.com and vendor.walgreens.com. So you can see that this gives us a great deal of information about the site without us actually having to attack anything. And of course, as a defender or as an auditor, it gives us good questions to ask about how well segregated the network is.